Hey, I'm Bryce Bray. I coach the running backs here at Harding, uh, and I recently transferred uh, over from, from working with the offense line to the backfield now. But um, a, a lot of what we do in the backfield is tied in with, with up front. And um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm just uh, really honored uh, to, to speak here at, at the ARFCA clinic. And um, the committee does a great job getting some speakers together. And there's some great coaches in the state that do an unbelievable job. And, um, you know, being a coach's son and growing up in the field house and being around the game for so long and um, coming to these clinics and listening to, to great men and, and, and great coaches speak or something that I looked forward to every year as a kid growing up. And it's funny, you know, that, you know, I was helping demonstrate my, my dad speak at one of these clinics uh, years ago on offensive line fundamentals. And, and now I'm talking about some offensive line drills and it's just really neat how it works. So I was really excited whenever coach Williams um, reached out to me to, to, to speak. So um, I'll go ahead and get right into it um, about some of the stuff that we do here at Harding, some of the run drills that, that, that we do and, um, you know, here at Harding, you know, we run the football. Um, obviously, a lot of people know that and we're more option oriented. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of great coaches out there that do other things scheme wise um, and different things than us philosophy wise. And that's awesome. Um, you know, for what we do here, you know, these drills really help us for what we do. And I think a lot of these drills are, appli or are applicable to uh, other schemes and philosophies that other coaches like to run. You know, you can kind of take bits and pieces here and, and tailor make it for what you want. You know, here at Harding, you know, we're really big on doing drills that, that translate. You know, we don't want to do drills just to do drills. We want to do drills that show up um, in, in games and things that you can coach on and, and it take it right back to drill work. And, you know, we are a, a, an increment teaching based team. And so we like to teach things from from ground zero and uh, and increments and build and scaffold to, to a finished product. And, um, you know, we feel like that whenever kids can see results, they're more eager to learn. Um, they're, they're more eager to, to get out there and practice and have fun and put in work on their own. So, um, you know, the, these drills that, that we use, we really like to make them as game simulant as possible. So I'll go ahead and get started. So uh, some of the things that we start every single day with are our EDDs, everyday drills. Um, this is just a board progression. You know, here at Harding, we believe that you got to have great feet uh, to play offensive line. You know, blocking people starts from the ground up. If I can't get my feet in the right spot, then I'm going to be behind the entire play. Um, so like many other coaches, we use the crap out of the boards. Um, we use a ton of boards and uh, we, we start with one step. You know, everything in our offense revolves around the base block. So, you know, the first initial step, a six inch pigeon toed step is what we use in our base block technique, but that really catapults us into the rest of our techniques that we do here at Harding. Um, so we start on the boards using a six inch step, then we progress in the boards and in different increments to two steps and then a two step to fit. And then we finish and come out using the boards. So the boards are great tools because um, they give us landmarks with our feet and they help us keep a great base when I'm in our dry blocks. So uh, I can, uh, Got some tape on that that I'm looking forward to show. And also, uh, we use the board severe for uh, uh, foot placement and emphasis on our beers. And a lot of you guys may not beer, but in some offenses you do. And uh, we, we use that uh, to, to give a, a, land, a landmark and a reference to work back into a defender. Um, so I'll go ahead and get some of the film. So I don't have everything filmed, but um, some of the stuff I do have. Normally, this angle right here is just our one step. Perfect one step, six inch pigeon toed step. And we just take it with our right foot. We'll go three in a row, boom, one step and reset, one step and reset, one step and reset. And then we'll work all the way through the line and work into uh, both ways. And then we'll progress into two steps. And uh, I don't have the two steps film, but this is the side view of what we usually do with the boards. And um, so after we progress from one step to two steps, we'll work into a, a two step and fit. And, you know, we want to get two steps in the ground before contact. That's a, that's a big thing for us here. And um, that's why we're so far off the ball. You know, a lot of flexible teams, it gives us um, some room so we can work lateral to overtake gaps and scoop people that we'll talk about a little bit later. But it also helps us get two, two steps in the ground before contact and allows us to square defenders up. And uh, in our base block, we, we want to give our back a two-way go always. So we want to square guys up. And um, So this is kind of the, the, the progression from one step to two step to two step and fit. Uh, right here. And, and once we get our two steps in the ground right here, you can see our guys, we want to fit um, with our hat um, and then strike with our hands and uppercuts with our thumbs up. Uh, so our, our saying is hat, hands and feet. And, uh, you know, I, I like to steal sayings from all over. And, and one I stole from, from my dad is um, 
you know, these two screws in your helmet, uh, guys, right here that, that keep your face mask together. You can see these, you know, it's, it's two screws for two titties. You know, that, that, that's our landmark. We want to put those two screws right there in the V of that dude's uh, neck and right in his breastplate. So it's hat, hands, and feet in that order. And we want to accelerate our feet and run down that board. Um, and our guys do a good job. We do these every single day. This is a, a foundational building block. It, it's not fancy. It's not uh, just a, a cutting edge science of a drill, but, but it's applicable. It's applicable and it works for us. And um, it starts everywhere um, with us. It starts with these footwork steps. So you can see the second guy in line right here. This is, this is one of our guards, Dalton Allen. He does a great job. He is a technician. So he gets two steps in the ground before contact. I know you can't see him, but he's got his face up. He's got a great fit on that guy, and he's accelerating his feet and, and coming out of his hips through contact. So right here, as we progress and, and then get into our veer steps, we like to veer on the boards as well. Um, we're taking our, our original six-inch pigeon toed uh, step right here to keep us square, and we want to step back on this board and work down this vertical lane. And, and the reason we do this is because uh, whenever I take a pigeon, toe, it presses me back into that defender. If this defender right here is really heavy on me and my toe is pointed, usually when my toe is pointed, my knee will go where my toe goes and my hip will go where my knee goes and my shoulder goes where they all go. And then if that guy's really heavy, we'll all go down inside. And a good defender, if he gets down block or he gets veer, he wants to compress that thing and eliminate vertical running lanes and take the back at the same time as, as keeping us off the second level. You know, that's a win. They're canceling uh, two players with one. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to make this guy really, really work hard um, to compress us down if he's going to, to take the dive. And um, the whole time through our guys, we, we want to have our eyes up looking for the second level defenders. Let's now look at the drill. Skip one. Right here. So this is one of our tackles right here. And he does a pretty good job. He takes a great pigeon toe step. He, he, we call it a hand trade and replace. Um, and he gets his eyes right here on the second level. He's looking for that linebacker. So if that linebacker were to step up right here in his gap, he can press off the second step and pin this guy right there. So um, that's why his eyes are up and like that. And uh, I'm sorry if I can't go into much detail as I'd like to about some of the stuff that we do uh, fundamentally and um, here at Harding, but I would love to reach out to you and talk about some of that. If I get opportunity, I'm just trying to get through these drills. So, um, you know, I, we can get through as many drills that we like to do as possible um, and give you guys some resources that you can pick and choose from and, and still some things if you want to. So this next um, drill we have is, is a fit, fit the fight drill. And really why, one of the reasons we love this drill is because it helps us explode out of our hips and get into a great fit. So we, we start coiled up into a great fit uh, with our face in, in the V of that defender's neck. And on the whistle, man, we want to strike and fit with our thumbs up and our, our, our hand thumbs up on the breastplates. And, and one of the reasons we really like this is it helps our kids get comfortable uh, playing with great leverage and in a great powerful position. Um, that is one thing that our kids uh, seem to really like about this drill. And um, one thing that we'll do is we'll actually progress from this after we, we, we set and fit, we set and fit, um, we'll actually work into a hand fight, a progression. So we'll set and fit and both guys will fit up on each other and then they'll fight for inside hand leverage. And you know, as much as we love to, to base block and, and, and run the football and come off the ball physical, you know, uh, and you can be in great posture, but if your hands are not inside, it's really tough to win against good, strong uh, defense alignment. It really is. And that and that, that's one thing that, that I learned the hard way coming to college football and playing college football is you, you got to have great hand placement. And um, this is a drill that really helps our guys do that. This is another angle of the drill right here. So they'll strike. Um, they're already in a good, good position. They'll strike and extend all the way out. And then um, we'll progress into a hand fight that I, I do not have that on film, but we'll, you can kind of see how that would work. We would fight for two or three seconds working for inside leverage. Uh, the next increments working up to the finished product of, of the base block is, is our low sled exercises. Um, these are great. Um, you know, one thing that I learned, you know, from my dad and, and talking to my dad and, um, and, and talking to Coach Shockley, man, they do some great things at Washtenaw too uh, up front. And 
the best way to, to get better at blocking people is blocking people. Uh, you know, there's no question about it. So but it's hard for us to, to play as physical as we want to and, and keep our guys healthy. Um, that, that's one thing that we struggle with a little bit. So, you know, we try to be uh, kind of creative in, in how we practice so we can practice physical and practice with great technique, but also keep our guys healthy. And, and using the low sled uh, are ways we can do that as well as the heavy bags. So this next drill is our four-point explosion drill, and, it, and it's, in a, it's a step up from the fit and fight drill. It's a fit and press drill. So uh, it's an old school four point explosion drill. We want hat, hands and extend all the way out. We want to work on our snap coming off the football and, and, and rocking the defender's head back and getting some movement. Cause you know, and, and what we run and what we do here, it hits so fast. You know, it's not like more of a, a zone scheme where you got to stay engaged for longer and, 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 and step and lift and work uh, with your partner to, to, to keep guys engaged and, and uh, keep them in their, in their gap. So uh, what we do is more of a strike and violent and, and, and the balls by, um, you know, so hopefully there's some, some things that you can take from these drills that, that'll help you guys. Um, this is a really simple one that we love. It just helps us learn how to be physical and be explosive. So you can see our guys, our, our, our hat should make contact first. And then we strike with our hands and extend with our hip or hips all the way through. And then we scramble back up, reset, whistle blows, boom, we're right at it again. And then again, all the way through. So we'll hit that two or three sets. And then um, we'll all come together and break up into two lines. So there'll be a line right here and then a line right down here. And then we'll actually progress into a base block. So we'll shade one way or another and we'll get our two step fit like we do on the boards and progress everything together. So we'll take appropriate steps. Um, we'll get a great fit and strike and, and hip explosion. Then we'll actually drive the low sled. And, and our guys really like this drill, um, you know, because it's a chance to also compete against one another. You know, uh, they're guys trying to turn the sled on each other and, and, and the sides are, are keeping score and, and the losers doing get ups. And uh, so our, our guys really get into it and, and they really enjoy this drill. And it's a drill that really translates over to the field. So this next base block drill is um, we call it heavy bag circuit. And, you know, this is just one guy going, but we got five or six bags in a row that we all can go at once. And it, it's the same. It's just putting it all together, kind of like the two man drive on the sled. It's the exact same thing with these resistance heavy bags. And all of these bags are over 100 pounds. And it, it's a great way for us to be really, really physical and, and not beat each other up. So you can see. Uh, this guy right here, our, one of our tackles taking a two step, he gets two steps in the ground at contact. I love for his face to be a little more up, but he has a great flat back and snaps through his hips and then he drives, you know, really uh, keeping that emphasis on his insteps right there. And, and that's something that we really uh, focus on. And that's why we like to pigeon to our steps so much is always to stay square and keep uh, uh, a good instep presence. So here, here, here's some game clips, kind of how they transfer, translate over. And, um, you know, our guys, they can coach themselves. They know exactly, you know, what drill can they do to work on this? So, you know, right here, um, Mason Hutto, our right guard's getting a base block right here. And, and he's barely getting that second step in the ground, which tells me he needs to get him in the ground faster. He's too slow or his split, his distance um, off the ball is not appropriate. And, um, so he can tell you that. He'll be able to tell you exactly, oh, coach, I, I barely got my second step in the ground. I'm in a good posture. I'm in a good fit. But, you know, my right hand right here, I misfit that thing. So he'll say in the fit and fight drill, in the fit and press drill, I need to reset my hand and keep working. So, But he's in a pretty good lean in a powerful position and does a great job right here finishing. And we got a pretty good play. Our right guard, same thing again, right here. He, same thing, he, you can see him. He, he does a pretty good job with his two steps, getting him in the ground. For, he's in a good body posture, but yet he's not using his hands like he needs to be. And he'd be able to tell you, hey, coach, you know, I, I need to work on this. My fit. I need to reset my hand inside. Um, but he's coming off the ball physical and snapping through and, and accelerating his feet. He does a really good job and buries that guy right there. Um, it's really fast. It hits really fast. It's really physical. But and that's kind of how we play is with, is with a flat back. And um, it kind of translates over our guys can, can, can correct each other, which is really neat. Um, this next one is um, our left tackle. So in our offense, everyone has to be able to base block. They just do. It's, it's part of what we do. And it's a fundamental 
uh, of the offense we run. And um, if you guys don't know, you know, Northwest Missouri, they, they've been really good for a long time. And their D line up front's very, very good. And uh, this, our left tackle right here, Sam Wilson, and, and by, by week six, um, excuse me, by week 12 uh, here in the playoffs, we are, um, he's a little slight, he's a little uh, light in the britches right here. And he's probably 255 or 260. And, and this guy across from him is, is much of a man. He's, he, he's close to three bills and he was their conference defensive player of the year. And uh, uh, cool fact is that this interior guy over here was the runner up. So, and they always have a really good D line. And so, you know, we're, we're outmatched physically, but uh, our, our tackle does a great job with his fundamentals by coming off with a flat back, getting his two steps in the ground before contact and rolling his hips through, rolling his hips uh, through the strike. So you can see him right here from the butt shot, really getting his steps down right there and striking with his, with his hat and the V of that dude's neck and his thumbs up. And you can see this defender's head rock back a little bit. Boom, right there. And we're underneath him and he's working and finishes. That's a great job. Um, you know, so uh, if you do everything right, you got a chance against guys that are bigger and stronger than you are. Um, and we feel that way here at Harding. The way we play gives us an advantage. You know, we uh, want to be more physical and want to be technical and, and fire off the ball and, 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 and be violent in the way we attack. And, and the ball hits fast and it complements what we do uh, very well. So these next couple of drills are, drills are veer, veer scoop and combo scoop uh, drills, and they all kind of go together. And, and both of them are, are, are really game-like. Um, they're actually very simple. Uh, you can see right here our veer lines. You know, we, we just break this up. So in the game, there would be, you know, a lineman here and a lineman here. And, and if we're running a mid with a guard, you know, he's just veering underneath that guy. But, you know, we break them into lines to get a bunch of reps. So there's guys here, and then you see shadows here. And we got six linemen going at once. and and they're all veering at the same time. And, and uh, the defender is, is giving him different looks. He's giving him a light look. Or in this instance, he's giving him a heavier look where our guys really got to press off this end step and, and transfer his weight back in this defender so he doesn't collapse that running lane down. Um, the whole time that he's doing this is obviously we want to take that pigeon-toed step so we can have weight to transfer back into the defender. But we also want to hand trade. You see him hand trading right there. And, and what that's doing is he's eliminate contact surface right there, that line. He wants to turn his shoulders a little bit so that defender doesn't have a big old target or shoulder to really compress. And um, the whole time his eyes want to be on the second level, like I kind of touched on earlier, uh, where he can really just pin that backer if he were to fill and, and this guy were to fall off late um, and the backer would have filled downhill. So, you know, this guy right here is blocking for the dive in this sense, if that makes um, sense. So I'll show you some clips they'll kind of piece together. So also another way we can progress this drill is a lot of times uh, we'll get a linebacker right here and we'll have him pop from depth and, and fill fast where our guy has to get his eyes on that linebacker. And on that second step right there, he has to redirect and press off. So um, it's a really good drill that translates directly to what we do in the games, whether it's a, it's a tackle, uh, whether it's a guard on the mids, um, you know, whether it's a center. You know, when we're working a combo scoop that we're going to talk about here in a minute, uh, it's a really good drill that our guys get get a lot of uh, work from, and uh, it really helps them understand the concept. So right here, this is our left tackle. Um, right here, that, that, that's Viren, and and these guys on defense, they do an unbelievable job. This is Wash and and I mean, they have a great program. Uh, they're really well coached. They're disciplined. Um, they do a lot of things right, and you can see why our tackle has has really got to have some great technique right here in the way he veers. I mean, says, look how heavy this D end is on our tackle. So if we're not stepping back into this guy, man, he's just going to collapse us all the way down and he's going to eliminate the dive and he's going to eliminate us from getting on this backer um, if, if he does able to do that. So our, our, our tackle does a really good job taking a good pigeon toed step. He's eliminating contact area with his, with his shoulder. He's stepping back into this defender, but he has his eyes on the second level. So we can press off that second foot and pin that guy right there. So we have a vertical running lane. So, you know, they watch does a great job right here. They're compressing us, making it a tough read in our quarterback, but they're fitting that backer right there in B gap. No one, so we know he's a B bat B gap player. And the, ultimately this guy's playing C or quarterback. So we have this running lane right there because our tackle is able to press that guy and we kind of squirt through there.
So this right here is another look, um, but it's a different scheme now. So now it's a mid scheme. And now our guard is the one beer. And now it's not the prettiest beer in the world, but it kind of shows you that, that multiple positions ha have to do that. Um, so, you know, our guard starts with his knee roll. Um, he's not, he's not, he oversteps a little bit. He's not, a, not as pigeon toed as we want. And he's a little too high with too much surface area, but you can see how his eyes in the second level and he's working right up there to block for the dive in that sense. And we got a pretty good football play right there. Next is our scoop drill. Um, you know, this is another drill that, that we work really hard on just uh, not, not banging on our guys. And uh, this is a drill that, that we love doing on the sideline because it gives us a gauge for the white. So, you know, we're off the ball a little bit more because we want to be able to work lateral um, and have some space before the defenders can actually penetrate so we can get gaps stolen and we can cut the play side thigh board of a defender. And um, so I love, we love working on the sideline right here. So we can make sure he's staying flat for two steps. And, you know, when his second step's getting into that white, we know he's eating up his cushion. So, um, that's a great coaching point right here. So we actually want to be flat, flat, and then a crossover blowing up through that guy. And we want to take our inside hand and, and blow it up through the, his cross, through his tail pad right there. And we want to end up into a scramble um, through his thigh board right there. And, and that's kind of how we teach our scoop drill. But this is a, a really simple drill. It's really efficient. Our guys can get into it and roll. Um, we really like this drill. And um, it, it's exactly what we're going to do in the game. Another look right here. So right here, you, you'll get to see a, a live scoop from our backside tackle right here. Um, he does a pretty good job, not a great job, but a pretty good job. He's lateral with his first step. Um, his second step's also lateral. Uh, what we would love to happen is his third step, we want to get that thing stuck in the ground and, and blow forward down the field toward the goalpost and, and go into a scramble. And he he does not. He kind of loses his feet a little bit. But we really would love to transition and go ahead into a scramble and steal that gap. So this, this next drill combines our veer and, and our long scoop together. And uh, really what this is for is, is for whenever we're long scooping a defender and, and uh, – our inside gap right here is covered by an interior lineman. Uh, this allows uh, this guy not to just shoot the gap as fast. So if our if our inside guy right here, let's say it's the center or, or, or a guard with a three technique, and, th and this may be a tackle over here, um, this keeps this guy in that gap um, and not penetrating up the field. So our, our long scooper here to the left has time to get that guy reached. So you'll be able to see it right here. So it's just a veer inside. It's a veer paired with a long scoop. And we're able to get that guy scooped. And it just keeps him from just blowing and storting right up the field and, and, and mesh charging. So we use this a lot in the games. You know, so we, we have a head up to head up scoop rule and, you know, he's responsible for scooping anything that's head up to head up the next guy. So that would be his responsibility. This three technique that this umpire right here is covering. Um, but since this guy is getting is covered right here, since he's got someone covered, he's going to veer to um, eliminate that space and that gap in the, in there, <clears throat> right in there in the B gap. So you'll be able to see our guard right here veer. See, he's veering underneath him. It's kind of hard to see. And then our tackle is long scooping underneath. So we, we, we need that, uh, that a great veer by our guard there to take away the penetration space. And ultimately, our guard would be a little athletic, more athletic right here and get his feet in and block this guy on the backside and get in his way a little more. So th this next drill right here is a drill that, that we just kind of felt like we needed to create. Um, it was a drill that we had some some nodes guard leakage issues, and um, it's it's a drill that that we just kind of started rolling with one day, and now we really love it. It's 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 very important for what we do, as much as we scoop noses, and and so we, we kind of incorporated the base block uh, instead of a instead of a veer, but we're we're still having our long scoop here. So our centers are are, are taking a, a a base block step. <clears throat> right here on the play side. 
excuse me, right here. So our center should be st stepping with a base step left, but he's leaving too much space in between him and this guy. He On his second step, he wants to work vertical. He doesn't want to bleed. So our backside guard can scoop this guy. So right here, you can see it again. Now the nose goes with him. On our first step, we've incorporated the read into our scoop with our backside guard. So he can see this nose guard. And if there's, there's no fabric showing from that nose, it tells him to go ahead and climb to the next level right here because this nose is playing the front side A and there's someone going to be playing the back side A. And so we, we've started doing this instead of just chasing, you know, for years we just chased and chased, you know, trying to scoop that guy. Um, we felt like it was more efficient to kind of work this read into it uh, to where our guys can read that nose. Uh, here's a pretty good look of right here. Uh, in front of this umpire, there's a nose guard here. So it's a it's an odd 50 look. And uh, as the snap goes, you can see the nose slants backside. So we tell our guard right there when he's reading that nose, if I see any color at all, if I see any color fabric, I'm scooping. So he knows that guy steps toward him, he's mine. I, I, I'm scooping that cat. And um, so now our center, it's important for him to stay vertical. So if he were to bleed, this backside backer could fit right underneath it. And that's why we try to press things vertical, but our center is a good job staying vertical and fitting that guy up right there. Um, on our front side right here, you can see that we, we have a bust. You know, we should be down and inside and then down and inside, he's in the A gap. He's the B gap protector in our, in our zone dive scheme. And we got a tight end, which would be a D gap protector in our slot in the C. Um, but you see how our guard steps out right here and we get lucky. Um, we're really fortunate that that backer doesn't get there in time when we slide right around him with our B back. So this is another look right here. I'll go ahead and go to the butt shot so you can see a little bit better with the nose guard read. Um, on, on the first step, uh, the nose is definitely slanting to the, with the center. So our, 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 our guard has his eyes right here. And if, if he sees covered, the nose is covered with the center, his eyes immediately get to the backer and he's running this track right off his hip pocket. And he's trying to get this guy cut off on the backside and does a pretty good job with this running seam. Pretty good seam right there. Good job cutting off backside pursuit. So, you know, th this next drill we do is something that a lot of teams do. Um, we get a ton of reps and we work all of our combos and all of our double teams, a lot of our tandem stuff. And um, so we're able to work center center guard combos really quick and then guard tackle combos and tackle tight end stuff. And, and this, so, you know, we'll, we'll work aces and we'll work deuces, we'll work busters and, and, and not come off. And, um, you know, whether we're, we're working on the front side of a veer, whether we're, we're, we're fanning back and combo on the back side of a mid or a, a midline or mid triple concept. So um, these combo pods are very important for us. It, it allows us to break things down into, into smaller controlled environments and, and really teach with good angles uh, and, and good body posture. And um, so, you know, we just usually set it up with an interior lineman and then somebody that we're working to. So in this case, if we're running inside veer this way, you know, we're going to uh, ace a shade and we're going to base to reach is what we teach. And then blow up through his inside, step and lift, keep my outside arm preferably free uh, for the backside linebacker scraping over the top. And, you know, we use this a lot during our games. And uh, I got some clips to show you as, as well on that. So right here is, is just a buster uh, that we use, and that, that's just a double that we don't come off. You know, we, we'll, we'll use this a lot if, if we want to get the ball in the C gap or we'll run a little outside veer. Um, you know, we'll buster the B gap defender and then move the read key out a guy. And then this helps us get, just get great push, great movement. And then this, this drill right here allows us to, to really break it down, and we film these to make sure that we are actually getting hip to hip, stepping down and together and, and pressing, pressing vertically. So we'll use uh, a lot of these drills for our zone schemes as well. So whenever we run some zone option stuff, when we're zoning two eyes or four eyes with our guards and our tackles, we'll do it during this period. So right here, uh, you can see, but we're going to ace right here, this, this shade on the play side. So it, we're running triple to the left. We're gonna go ahead and, um, and ace that shade and, you know, this is another term that we like to tell our guys, and I stole it from Rob Bray, I stole it from my dad, and 
you know, we always want to take care of the Johnnies before we take care of the Susies. And, and what we mean by that is, you know, we don't want to come off this thing. We want to carry this double of this combo all the way to the second level. And that's something that, that our guys, I think it's funny, but it's very true. You know, we don't want to leave a combo prematurely if we don't have to. You can see us getting some great push inside. Pretty good. Again, right here to the top of the screen is another uh, another example of this or Asin combo on that shade to the backside linebacker, working shade to backside backer. So our guard doing a great job solidifying that track and blowing up through that guy all the way into the backside backer, creating that running lane, that vertical running lane right there. <clears throat> so this next example right here is, is just a buster. It's a double team between our, our guard and our tackle uh, on a B-gap defender. Of trying to create a really short edge so we can slide this ball all the way in the C gap really quick and it hit fast. See how fast that hits. You know, it really just shortens that edge with that movement step to step. And so our guys can see uh, how all these drills translate exactly to the game. You know, um, you know they're nothing fancy. Uh, they're not super super creative. And I'm not pulling stuff out of the air. We want stuff our guys to to be what they're going to do on game day on Saturdays. So th th this next uh, segment of drills are something that that we think is really special about what we do here at Harding and um, we call them pods or, or, or load pods or three on three drills. There's a lot of names that we kind of throw out there um, with them. And, you know, Coach Wheaton brought these with him whenever he came to Harding and, you know, he's been coaching this offense for a really long time. And he does an unbelievable job. And, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, we feel like is, you know, probably forgotten more football than I may ever, ever, ever learn or know. And, uh, Coach Wheaton uh, has kind of invented this drill, and it's a great way to get a ton of reps really fast. It's a great way to practice assignment football uh, and kind of throw your guys in the fire a little bit. Um, it's a great way to to keep the gap integrity in, in assignment football, like I said. So um, it's also a great time to throw junk fronts and, and, and slants and pops and and bring all the funk that your guys may see actually in, in the game. And um, – so we, we take this time to actually uh, practice all that. So, you know, we're, we are at a point in Harding where you know, we feel like we put our guys on the field and they get a look or a stun or a pressure that we have never seen before. Or our guys haven't repped in practice, and that's on us as coaches. And um, we want our guys to never panic. We want them to play fast and feel comfortable and applying their rule and applying their rule with great technique. And, and these drills help us do that. So this three-on-three -three pod drill is one that – um, is mainly between our center and guards. And we hit a ton of different looks with different schemes. And like I said, different pressures and, and uh, funky little uh, stunt pickups. And then our load pod drill usually goes on the same time. And that's a little tandem drill. And, and you guys, you really work this with any scheme you do. Um, you know, anytime you're working a tandem with, with, with stunts, odd or even fronts, uh, backers folding back over in the box or a pressure from depth, um, a pop and backer, uh, you can work it, you know, with tackle tight end, uh, tackle H, uh, tight end tackle, uh, tight end wing, um, all that stuff. You, you guys can you can actually work work this uh, little segment. But you know, we we're just slanting and moving guys in different gaps, and and we're just applying our rule and doing it really really fast with with great technique and getting a ton of reps. And we feel like it's a drill that um, really gives us an advantage when we get in a game. So right here, this is a two stack look, we like to call it. So, uh, you know, head up twos and stack backers. So we don't know where they're going, just slanters all over the place. And, um, you know, we want our guys to have great feet and take great pigeon toed steps with our base block here to square this guy up and give our back a two way go. You know, ultimately if he slants way out there, it's obviously probably gonna push us in the A gap, but we still want our guys to, to practice that rep in their mind and, and, and know we want, them to show us that we know what they're doing and what they're trying to do and trying to stay square and trying to give us a two way go. So it's really good right here. Our center knows that, that he's got the front side a gap right there. 
So, you know, that's that action key sinking the B back in here. So we'll actually work this with our quarterback and our B back and our B back can work on his action keys and his cuts. And then our quarterback can actually get some read key stuff down whenever uh, we, act, we get into the mid footwork stuff and some of our mid schemes. Here's another look right here with some slanters. So uh, play is to the left right here and our guards trying to base this two technique. And with the head up two, we step inside uh, gap conscious. So, you know, we want to protect the inside gap at all times, but our guard does a great job with this pigeon toed step. He's loaded. He's got weight here on his instep where he can press back into that defender to square that guy up. And our center right here is working front side a gap. He's thinking front side back or to back side. I just know I have this a gap as a center and whether it's a pop here or whether it's a scrape and over the top, I have that dude. So it's a great job way for our centers to work through their assignment progression. So now we work to a different scheme right here. And now we're in a mid scheme. So our guards veer underneath that guy. So whether this guy's slanting and they end up in a wash or whether he's slanting out, this guard is veering up underneath eyeballing that second level defender and he's blocking for the back. It's also good on the back side here because uh, we have gap responsibility rules. I'm A gap, B gap, C gap out the back door. So, you know, whether he slants in here, he'd be the centers or whether he slants out, he's the guards. And the backer comes from depth, the A gap would be the centers. So, uh, it's really, really good uh, for our gap integrity rules and our gap integrity plays. Makes our guys think really, really fast. Um, here are some, some quick game clips of, of, of some slants, some slant stuff, and our guards doing a good job uh, redirecting. And I mean, it, it, it's not devastating, but it's giving us, giving us a chance. You know, coming off the ball, and a lot of you, you, you coaches know this, coach some similar offenses. If, you know, coming off the ball with such a heavy load on your hand, a lot of times it's tough when people are, are stimming and slanting around. And that's why we teach that, that, that pigeon toed step and that weight on that instep so we can really push off and square that guy up. And we got to rep it a lot. And you can see our guys right here doing a pretty good job getting the uh, interior D lineman covered up. So our guard, he's stepping into a three technique with a good pigeon toed step, but he slants inside. So he's able to redirect off that step and step back into the crotch of that defender and, and, and try to square that guy up as much as he can. Now, our tackle right here is our B-gap defender. You know, even though we get five, um, our, our tackle right here um, is too conscious right here. He, he, he hangs on his tandem too long um, with the slot that I'll talk about later with our load pod drill that's going on the same time we work this three-on-three -three drill on a different, different part of the field. But uh, he's hanging there a little too long. He, you know, his eyes are correct, but he's just hanging there too long. You know, he's the B gap protector, and there it is. So here's another one right here, our left guard. Our left guard, uh, thinking he's basing a two eye right here. He takes a step and the two eye slants to a three. So he has to, to, to push off that inside step uh, back into the V of that guy's neck to try to square that guy up. Now we're running a, a speed option look and leading with the back on the edge right there, but he does a great job not allowing penetration, especially when we don't have a back holding these guys in here. So they're able to skate easier. There's no mesh holding them, making them hunker. So it's a, it's a pretty good job by our guard. This last look is a slanter right here, our right guard now. You know, this guy's about 320 pounds. He's a heavy dude. And so it's really hard for this dude to change directions. And we worked on with him a lot, but he does a really good job. We wish he was a little more pigeon toed, uh, but he's doing a good job pressing back into that guy and, and kind of giving us um, a, a two way go right here on our, on our inside beer play. We would have pulled it, we'd have been in good shape. So right here is, is a 4-2 Rebel look. Sorry, the, the film is a little late to start, um, but it's a gap three, a gap three, and then two backers here, two A-gap backers walked up. So we get this sometimes, just some, some jump people getting desperate, and they'll walk up two gap threes, and they'll, they'll bring two A-gap linebackers in here, and they'll plug or they'll twist. And um, this really helps our guys that we have gaps, not guys. You know, we're basing on the front side, and then we're, we're working our gaps. And um, – regardless whether they're twisting or not. So you can see it right here again. So now we have a mid scheme. So our guard's still veering and he's blocking right here uh, for our B back. 
So he has, he's veering in the A-gap and he has a, a presence in his A-gap. So he aborts his veer and just goes in and he mashes his A-gap now because his threat's in his A-gap. So it really uh, tells him to come off and get to his assignment fast. And it makes him apply his real quick. Same thing on the backside. We're still working ABC out the back door, protecting our quarterback's back. So right here we have a twist. Rebel twist, and we'll get this sometimes in the game. So back to our, our, our zone dive play. And our center doesn't need to chase these guys. So this front side linebacker twists in the backside A gap, and they exchange gaps, but it shouldn't affect us, right? You know, we just need to have gaps, not guys. And uh, this drill really helps them uh, <clears throat> get used to that. So right here, this is a, this is a, a mid scheme over here on the left. So, you know, we're reading this cat for dive and uh, our guard should be trying to veer up underneath this guy uh, for the dive. Uh, the D end compresses really hard, but our center screws up. You know, our quarterback's opening up and his back is opened up in the backside A-gap and we have an exposed A-gap. The center chases uh, the twister right there. The center's trying to cut this twister off and he chases this twister when in reality, he should be in the backside A-gap right here. So, you know, this is uh, another scenario where we work on this in practice. Um, so our guys can know, Hey, this is when we work it right here is, and this is why it's important. You see it right here. Um, you know, we get, we get lucky right here and have a decent play. Um, but we're really not sound right there in the backside a gap because of that bust. So this is the exact same play, but over here to the right now, and uh, we do a better job being more sound, working ABC out the back door, protecting our quarterback's mesh. See how he's open, the quarterback's mesh in the backside gap. So we're doing a lot better job protecting him right there. And uh, our, our guard veers right here underneath this backer, so it doesn't affect us. You know, we still have our gaps in these junk fronts. Got a good play right here. Our back press <clears throat> slides right off that block from that guard. Got a big play. So same thing with the odd stack right here. Um, you know, we get a lot of these uh, odd looks where, you know, we got double threes and nose and a tight mic and they're, they're, they're twisting and stunting and popping. And, um, you know, this really helps uh, our guards and center right here uh, work to pick that up and communicate. Um, so, you know, whether we're going to the play side, they, they're working that nose guard read again right here. So right here, this guard sees color in Jersey. So he's going to go ahead and scoop that guy. And that center's working in the front side A-gap now. So now over while, while this whole drill is going on, while that three-on-three -three drill is going on, this load pod drill is going on. And uh, we work, we really work two main schemes over here. We work our, our zone dive scheme, like we talked about earlier, uh, where our tackle and our slot are working a skin technique. And really what they're going to do is they're going to skin uh, the defender and then also the other scheme that they're working is in an over under scheme or a load scheme. And, and that's what they're doing right here is a load scheme. So if this is the number one in the option count and we're reading him for dive, you know, we want to have a guy under the read and a guy over the read protecting uh, both options. So if we have, we hand the ball off, we need to have a guy right here protecting the, the dive. We need also need to have a guy, if you were to gap exchange and squeeze a guy protecting the quarterback. And that's what we, we do right here. So uh, the tackle is under and the slot is over and they're working this backer to a third level defender out here um, to a free safety. And you kind of see the slot skirt, skirt out there. So we go rapid fire both sides and give different looks, but you'll be able to see it right here. This is a different, this is a gap exchange. The DN is, has squeezed. Our tackle can't fit up this outside peck of this linebacker. So he gets in his hip pocket right here and it heads to the third level defender. There he is, the free safety coming. And our slot now will lock the box. He sees the outside peck is, is empty and not covered. Our slot will go ahead and lock that box right there. So we worked that a bunch of different ways. There it is again. There it is again. Good. This time our tackle can do what? Our tackle can 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 fit this guy's outside peck if they were to up and plug. So our, our slot can continue to work all the way to the third level and block for the pitch now. 
Oh, excuse me. Let me go ahead and get down here where I can. There we go. So here's here's some some, some zone dive looks. Um, well, I talk about that skin technique. Um, so our tackle is, is is working a power veer technique, and he's stepping and lifting on that C gap defender, so our slot can really dig out and skin uh, that C gap defender. Um, but our tackle has still got B gap integrity, so he's power veering until he has to become the B gap protector. And what we mean by that, he's basing and washing anything in the B gap. So he's stepping and lifting on this five technique right here, this five, but his eyes are still in this B gap. So he gets a B gap threat, so he has to come off now, and he's, he's, he's blocking that backer, fitting that B gap, and our slot is digging out for uh, the, the five technique. So, I mean, it doesn't matter, like, whatever defense or offense you run, um, you know, you guys are going to see looks like this, whether you're working just some, some, some gap scheme, tandem stuff, and digging out with, with a fullback or, or a wing, um, or you're working zone stuff, working zone tandems, and they're twisting and stunting or looping guys in the box. This is a great scheme where you can you can get all these fits down, whether it's an odd or a four eye four, um, stepping in and slanting out, you know, passing guys off, or whether it's a um, an even and they're popping backers and a five crossing face and and, and pinching all the way and uh, and pirating into the B gap, things like that. Um, we feel like this drill could, could be useful for a lot of different programs and. Um, regardless of the scheme and philosophy. So here it is again. So this time the five crosses face and becomes in the B gap. So our B gap protector goes ahead and washes him and our, and our slot continues to work to the C gap defender. So this first one right here is an odd look. We got a, got a, a 0 50 and we got a head up four. So um, our tackle is going to power veer, right, with, with B gap integrity. So if he were to step out, he's going to continue to, to step and lift and let that guy clear him. And our slot is going to skin and dig that dude out in the C gap. Um, but if he were to cross face, he's going to go ahead and wash. And that's what happens right here. He goes in power veers. He, they're pinching. And by this point in the game, we, we, they're pretty regular with it. Um, so he's, he's kind of more angular instead of square into there like we are in our drill. Um, Cause you never want to guess obviously, but whenever teams, you know, they kind of get in the habit, you know, you kind of get a, get a beat on them a little bit. So he does a great job washing our slot, continue to, to run through the C gap right here. So we got a different look. We got a four three look right now, and even. So we got a five technique right here. Um, so our, our tackle is still going to power veer. He's going to step and lift, and, and, and try to take the edge off of that five technique. So our, our slot can really dig and chase his outside foot there and dig that guy and, and, and make a C gap player and put him in the D gap. Um, that's ultimately what we want to do here. And but our tackle should have his eyes inside, looking for for and his for B gap threats. You know, our back cuts it out the back door right here. But um, if you were to, to stay in the B gap, we should have a hat here. The center ends up getting on the on the mic, which is always a plus um, in this offense. When you get a center on the mic, you, you usually are, are, are rolling a little bit. So. Another even front, a little uh, a four three look right here uh, with, with two interior techniques. Um, with a heavy five right here. And now it's a, a different look where the five crosses face. So now the tackle is still power bearing uh, to cross face. But as soon as he becomes the B gap, it's full on base block. It's full on base block. And that slot is still running uh, that C gap cylinder right there. And uh, we have a really good play right there. We lock the box and no one's playing C. Uh, same game, they switch up fronts and you know, this is a good teaching point, kind of like we talked about earlier is, you know, you got these gap three techniques and a nose with the stack backers. Um, some of that junk front stuff where they can twist and pop and, and also fours playing games. Um, so this is why we feel like this, this drill is so important to our guys and, and getting them good live reps and practicing fast against these, these uh, pressures and, and popping backer looks and stunts. But now, uh, same thing, our, our tackle is going to continue thinking he's power veering. 
Um, he's the B-gap defender with a four-eye right here. He's thinking he's probably going to end up washing this four-eye if he stays in that B-gap, but he does not. He steps out, so our tackle continues to work vertical on his track, trying to help with body surface on, on that uh, now C-gap defender. Um, so our slot can dig him out. Our tackle stays in the B gap uh, as his responsibility and pins his back or scraping in the B. And we got a good seam right there. Let me slide it. Next, here are some loads. Um, kind of like we talk about over under schemes. So if this is number one in the option count reading him for dive, you know, this tackle is going to be underneath to this backer. And the slot's going to be over the top to this backer. And they're both working the backer to the free. Um, so you get, it's a good look right here at it. Let me skip ahead real quick. So you can see our tackle veer underneath and he fits this guy up. He, he, uh, he fits up all the way to his covers up his outside shoulder. So our, our slot or our a back is what we call him too, is sees everything's covered up. That backer is covered up so he can continue to work all the way to the third level to the roof. And now we get a hat on a hat in space and we, it's explosive explosive play when you get a hat on hat in space. Same play, different angle. <clears throat> so you see our, our tackle right here, or uh, our heavy guy, we're in tackle over, um, right here does a great job veering up to the next level and covering up that backer. So our slot can go all the way to the third level just like that load drill we just worked on. Another look right here. <clears throat> Got a 4-2 box. Same thing, our tackle veers, covers up this backer right here. So our, ta our slot can continue to work knowing this backer's covered up all the way to the third level. We love for our slot to get on his outside shoulder right there. Uh, but we're still in pretty good shape. Here's one with a gap exchange. Um, like we talked about earlier, um, heavy five gap exchange. So all the way down for dive, he's scraping for quarterback and uh, the tackle can't fit up his outside shoulder. So the slot and the tackle are working backer to free, and they see that. So slot's going to go ahead and lock the box right there, and the tackle's going to go all the way to the free safety. But I really appreciate your time. Um, I hope some of these drills could, could help you guys in, in some form or fashion. Um, I really apologize that we couldn't get more into, into detail about what we do here at Harding um, scheme wise, fundamental wise, and, and, and kind of get down to the nitty gritty of, of exactly how we do things and why we do what we do. Um, but I would love to, to talk to all of you guys and my, my cell phone information is listed below and as well as my email. And um, I'm very thankful for, for this opportunity to talk and, and speak. And also um, um, we're always open to, to recruiting your guys. You know, Arkansas has some unbelievable athletes, some unbelievable coaches who do a fantastic job. And uh, we want to be relational. We, we want to be uh, in your door. We want to recruit your guys. And we, uh, we really look forward to speaking with you guys and uh, in the near future. Thank you so much. God bless.